All right. Episode. 39. 39. Oh, we're almost at 40. We're almost at 40. We're getting up there. Yeah, getting yeah, yeah. old, young man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're at episode 39. Today we're taking a deep dive or a deep dive of a shallow topic. <laughs> yes. Vacant home tax. Vacant home tax. We're getting right into it. We're going to tell you what you need to declare. We're going to tell you how easy it is to declare it and give you so many reasons why there is no reason why you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's Yeah, it makes all the sense. Just listen to the podcast. Yeah, take a listen. And fill out your vacant home buyer tax. Uh, Joey's doing really good with his non-ordering from Uber. I went to Buffalo. I experienced Bill's Mafia. Go Bill's. Go Bill's. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> all right. Enjoy. Enjoy. Welcome to the Toronto Living's Podcast, a conversation about all things Toronto with a focus on real estate, the culture, and of course, the food. I'm Mark Savell. And I'm Joey Virgilio. And we're realtors with Sage Real Estate working together as a Toronto Living's team with a focus on helping you buy better, sell higher, and of course, having a little bit of fun along the way. All right. Episode 39. Here we go. Here we are. <laughs> Here, 39. Just creeps up on you. It does. Yeah. I'm actually turning 39 this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, wait, this, am I at 39? Are you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I do this to myself all the time, by the way. <laughs> Creeps up at you like your age. So yeah, I'm turning 39 this year. We're on episode 39. This is a special episode. It is special. Very special. Yeah. And it's one where we could potentially save our listeners thousands of dollars. Oh my God. Yeah. The amount of money that could get saved through this episode. Through this episode. So <laughs> thank you for listening and you're welcome for saving you all this money. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're going to be talking about the vacant home tax. Vacant home tax. We're going to go really deep in this one. This is the u- this is the ultimate reminder episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like how YouTube's like, the ultimate guide to yeah. working out. Yeah. <laughs> this is the ultimate guide to filling out your vacant home tax in Toronto. <laughs> Starring Joseph D. Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my middle name is? Uh, no. It's I not a true question. I have Wait a minute. No, no, no. Didn't you say it on the last episode? And I just can't remember. No, no, no. I let you guys have all your Daniel fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. Can I take a guess? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, Fred. <laughs> Mark Fred Savelle? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you want a second guess? <laughs> uh, no, no. Give me, give me. Anthony. Oh, <laughs> your middle name's Anthony. I'm Mark Anthony. Mark. An- oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Actually, wait, I, I did kind of know that. Though. Okay. Yeah. Because your, your realtor name comes Oh, up that's right. That's right. Mark yeah, yeah. My government name. Yeah. yeah gets <laughs> yeah. to schools when I do listings. I forgot about My brother's that. name is Anthony. Okay. Yeah. Is his middle name Fred? <laughs> <laughs> it is not. I will not reveal his middle name. I don't okay. know if he wants me to or not. <laughs> I was going to say AFV, America's Funniest Videos. Remember that? Nah, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just get to the I show. I do remember that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> How was your week? What did you eat? Uh, week was good. You know what? I didn't, again, I didn't eat out. I've been holding strong. Okay. Uh, I'm on the bread train. I got my starter going. It okay. takes a week to kick in, by the way. So, uh, no, I have no eat out shout outs because I've been so diligent. If I check your app, I'm not going to see any Uber orders. Uh. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Uber. It's not a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I actually have held back quite a bit. I, I'm going to pat myself on the back. For I'm that. proud of you because it's uh, it's baby steps. Baby steps. Yeah, it's not. You got to just slowly work into it. That's it. Yeah. Cut it down by that's February. It. There's a good BOGO. There's <laughs> a good BOGO. And that's all I'm going to say. What's your favorite BOGO go to? Okay. The last one I had, I had it. I had I had it twice because it was such a good BOGO. <laughs> so you BOGO'd to BOGO? I BOGO'd. You double BOGO'd. <laughs> I double bogeyed. Yeah. No, I got... Uh, no, it was Burrito uh, Brothers. Burrito Bros. Burrito Bros. Sorry. Yeah, Burrito Bros. <laughs> Still my favorite name and, and what it is. But like, yeah, it was like Bogo for, uh, it was Bogo Burrito and Bogo Chicken Quesadilla. Insane. Yeah. So, so you got, got four it. items? <laughs> uh, Joseph D. Joey. <laughs> I didn't feel good, but uh, I felt good about the deal that I got. <laughs> hey, man, a deal is a deal. Got to get it any way you can. Um, How about you? I went to Buffalo. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> I did. You went to Buffalo this week. I went to the Bills game on Sunday, and what an experience. <laughs> and I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just saying what an experience. <laughs> Different world south of the border, man. It's the uh, the Instagrams I saw looked so intense. Okay, so first football game ever. Okay. And it was probably one of the craziest games in the last <laughs> decade for the Buffalo Bills to play. It was a revenge game, so they were kicked out of the playoff run against the Chiefs before. Yeah. But this time it was at home. Okay. 
And do you know anything about the Bills? No, either do I really. Yeah. I'm, it got, I'm like two weeks into okay. it. <laughs> but they had this thing, which a lot of people have probably heard about, called Bills Mafia. And that's what the fans of the Buffalo Bills are called, the Bills Mafia. All right. And so a very common tradition with uh, football is you tailgate, you know, you go there at 10 a.m., start cooking up the food, yada, yada, yada. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, smash a couple hot dogs, have a few beers, go watch a game. The amount <laughs> of intricacy that these guys put into their stands is really? unreal. <laughs> I'm talking surf and turf, lobster and ribeye. Oh my God. I'm talking, you do have some of the guys with like just the straight hot dogs, but then you have like some gourmet people who are like setting it up. I love that so much. Um, I would love to experience that. That's look also uh, to, to beside that. Yeah. Um, the Instagram I saw of somebody pile driving a blow up doll. Okay. So <laughs> that was Taylor Swift that they were pile driving because uh, <laughs> Taylor Swift is dating a player on the opposing team. Right. So the parking lot was full of Taylor Swift. <laughs> They're just blur, and I gotta say, like they are. It isn't a. I don't want to say aggressive, but it's a. It's a wild, rowdy crowd. Yeah, but they are so nice. Oh, I love that. They are so nice. We were, you know, some guy comes out to us like, "Yo, you want a beer?" I'm like, "Yeah, how much?" He's like, "Nah, Bill's Mafia, have a beer." Oh, that's so awesome. Um, some I did a shot ski. You know, I, oh, I saw that too. <laughs> I yeah, a shot ski. A shot that's ski? what it's called. Yeah, a shot ski. <laughs> so basically, they put. I had two Buffalonians holding either end of the ski, <laughs> and he poured me a peanut butter look here and he's like just don't touch it just drink i was like all right and then they put the shot of the ski to your face and you just got to chug it it was a peanut butter like that's what i'm saying i was not expecting you to say that he's like you have two choices raspberry vodka or peanut butter liqueur i'm like i'll take the peanut butter (laughs) so fun it makes it so much better (laughs) and it's like so over visually stimulating because as soon as that was done there was a circle of people as the guy was about to give uh, the people's elbow to, uh, oh, I think we got to get the door there. Oh, someone's trying. Oh, he's got a key. Uh, sorry, he's, he's giving the people's elbow to uh, a Taylor Swift blow up doll on a table. Yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that was the tame version. The untamed version, they light the table on fire and then jump through it. Yeah. It's <laughs> unreal. Yeah. Oh, my. Did anybody get hurt? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see how Some you third degree burns and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see how you cannot get hurt from that. Like they would jump shoulder first. Okay, but I got to tell you, let's get to the food part quickly, and then I want to get to feed the pit. Okay. All right. Okay. Feed that type of feed the pit. You did. We okay. talked about it earlier. Yeah. yeah. Feed the pit. So we get there. I went with Alex Wong, second, third guest of the show. Yep. Um. So we went down. He called me up randomly, like, "Let's go to Buffalo, watch the game, whatever." I'm like, "I got to have wings. If I'm going to Buffalo, we got to do wings." Now, the big spot that everyone goes to is called Anchor Bar. Yeah. It's kind of like the, it's where, quote unquote, buffalo wings were created. And by an Italian too, mind you. Right. But he's like, no, we got to go somewhere like legit. So he reached out to his deep network of foodies <laughs> and they told us about Bar Bill North. Okay. Now, Bar Bill North, not to be mistaken for Bar Bill Aurora, because okay. <laughs> apparently on TripAdvisor, they are not the same. <laughs> <laughs> so Bar Bill North, he puts in the address, 1183 Main Street. Okay. We cross the border, we get there, and we hit Main Street, but in America, or in Buffalo, there's like 75 Main Streets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single person in town. It's dead. Oh, really? Nobody. And there's like five feet of snow everywhere, which is weird. In Canada, there's nothing. You yeah. go across the border, five feet. So we finally go to this this wing place, <clears throat> top three wings I've ever had in my life. Really? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hands okay. down. Yeah, I got, um, what do they have? Like this, um, uh, what was the flavor? Honey butter, Honey butter barbecue. Honey butter barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like honey. So it's sweet, sweet, sweet barbecue. Very uh, much. You don't like barbecue sauce. I do when it's with butter. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. No, it was delicious. But the greatest part of it was the buffalo dill sauce. No, oh. no, no, no. Buffalo blue cheese sauce, not dill. <laughs> yeah. Because dill is what we have in Canada. Yeah. Blue yeah, cheese. Yeah. yeah. Out of this world. Okay. The fluffiest. I don't know what's in the buffalo milk, but my <laughs> God, was this cheese ever good. What's it called? What, blue cheese? No, no, no. What's the place called? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bar Bill. Bar Bill. Brackets North. Bar Bill bar, Brackets North. North, yeah. And not Aurora. Not Aurora. Aurora. <laughs> I don't know what Aurora's about, but I was told to not go to Aurora. <laughs> so then we go drive to the stadium and uh, Waze is like, it's 2.5 kilometers from where, like, where we kind of hit traffic yeah. to get parking. So it was a 2.5 kilometer wait to get parking. <sighs> Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. And a lot of people were parking their cars and walking. And I'm like, look at these Americans. Like, so not like us smart Canadians, <laughs> right? And I'm like, I'm not walking 2.5. And Alex is like, no, we'll park close to the stadium. 
That was the worst mistake ever. <laughs> we should have walked. It would have been far better at the end of the game. Uh, so we're getting there and like the fans are crazy. All the houses have tailgate parties. All And you just like park your car there. They have porta potty set up. Love it. My jacket still smells like a barbecue pit. <laughs> like the second you hit that 2.5 kilometer. Immediate. Just food is in the air. Food is in the air. It just smells like. Um, Outdoor festival. Yeah. Like smoke. Like, uh, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. barbecue smoke. Um, so we start seeing, we park our car, we start going to the stadium and we see like all these signs with Peppa Pig, you know, oh, like the yeah. child the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. They all, they're all holding these like Peppa Pig signs. I'm like, what the heck? And then I start hearing feed the pit, feed the pit. And I thought it was feed the pig. So I was like, do they cook Peppa Pig? <laughs> 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 what type of satanic rituals am I walking into here? Basically they're building a brand new stadium for the Buffalo Bills next door. Oh. Right next to the current stadium. Okay. And there's a massive pit. Right. And the bills weren't doing too good until one faithful fan on an LSD trip <laughs> went into one of the porta potties, got covered in human feces. No one knows how, if it's his or that within the porta potty, and decided to jump into this 40 foot pit. <laughs> Since that faithful moment, the Bills have been on a winning streak. So every week, someone sacrifices themselves to this pit. I don't know if they're on LSD, and I don't know if they're dripped in feces, but that's the story of the pit. <laughs> the first guy was the ultimate sacrifice. Who's was the ultimate sacrifice. That's unreal that that became a thing. And someone told us that in the lot, and I'm like, did someone sacrifice themselves? Sacrifice like, in the pit. We like, to- just jumps in mm-hmm. and just... Whatever happens, happens. The The hospital said every week the Bills play, at least one person is brought in from falling in the pit. Now, here's the best part. Do you know Salino and Barnes? Do you no. remember Salino and Barnes? So as kids, they used to have like these commercials. Like we have Diamond and, you know, Diamond and Diamond, yeah, yeah. Salino and Barnes. Oh, that was, same, same <laughs> yeah. Hit by a car, call William Qatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Salino and Barnes had a bad breakup. I think one of them actually died in a plane accident. Okay. But whoever's still alive, whether it's Salino and Barnes, I don't recall. They actually had a booth in front of the pit advising people as a lawyer not to jump in this pit. Oh my God, get out of here. (laughs) Buffalo, man. Buffalo. I love that so much. (laughs) But the wings were incredible. If you're ever in Buffalo, I would say skip the anchor bar. I've been there before. Wings are good. Yeah. But Bar Bill, Brackets North, next level. Bar Bill, Brackets North. Brackets North. All right, write it down. Yeah. Yeah, uh, love that. Love that story. And that party sounds so, that sounds like a blast. I don't think I'll ever go back. It was a lot. <laughs> it's a one-time thing. It was a lot. But if you tempted me early fall and were like, I really want to experience it, you could probably twist my arm. All right. All right. We'll probably make a day out of it. <laughs> I'd be down to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stadium's crazy. Holds 70,000 people. Right. Um, all raging fans. The sound in there was like nothing I've ever heard before. That's so crazy. It was an experience. Was it, yeah. it was freezing too, right? Oh, it was freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. wore like 17 layers of clothes. Couldn't yeah. feel my toes at the end of it. <laughs> and then when I said the mistake of where we parked was because it took us literally 90 minutes to leave the parking lot. Oof. We parked in a space the size of roughly Liberty Village. Oh my God. With only one exit. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. They, they had to. There were so many people flooding out of the stadium that yeah. you couldn't have it any other way. There's just that. Many. So they close off the other. Yeah. Oh my God. That's brutal. Yeah. 90 minutes to leave. I got home at three in the morning. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, cause you're driving all the way back too. Yeah. 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 That's brutal. Yeah. Glad to, glad to be back. And it was wild. The second we crossed onto Canadian soil, no snow. <laughs> all melted. It's all, it's, the weather was warmer. The stars were out. It was like yeah. such a weird dichotomy of traveling. But anyways, <laughs> had a great time. And uh, shout out Barbell North. Barbell North. Yeah. And park on the outskirts. Yeah. And blue cheese dressing is better there than in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we pivot to news you can use? I think it's about time. All right. News you can use. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. It's a nice ender. Uh, all right. We're going to talk about using So we're going to talk about uh, this week because the Bank of Canada had an announcement. Mm. And they held. They held. They Hallelujah. Held. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, baby Jesus. Yes. That beautiful Instagram that Mark <laughs> uh, puts up every uh, <laughs> every announcement uh, came on. And it was music to my ears. This was, uh, so this was super anticipated. For sure. Uh, this is the quote unquote, the year of cuts. So, you know, when they'll cut is still up for question. The Santa pump did its, Santa. <laughs> did its job. Uh, so there's a lot more skepticism. A lot of people at the beginning of this were saying things like, you know, we might cut as as high as 1.5%. Yep. Everyone's starting to be a little more conservative after the, the Santa pump came out and uh, 
you know, the Santa rally. Let me correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just for the record, I still don't uh, acknowledge that term. It yeah. will forever be Santa Pump. And uh, go on as you were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, they the uh, they're officially kind of predicting in smaller numbers now. Yeah. So we, they, the prediction was one point five. Now people are saying uh, what a one point cut. I personally don't see anything happening until the summer. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, it's, it seems to be, uh, I think all are kind of a, in a, an aggressive spot in general, but, mm. uh, I do see the first, I don't see the first one happening for the first little bit. Well, I'm going to throw a curveball into this news you can use here because, uh, the market has picked up significantly in the last seven to 10 days. Yeah. Right. Bidding wars, 25 people, tw- not 25 people, 25 bids, 18 bids, 15 bids. I'm seeing it all across the board, not like one, two or three. So, okay. This is. This is really interesting, and I wanted to uh, mention that. I think I mentioned it slightly last time, which is like we've we've constantly been monitoring the, the months of inventory through yeah. this through our market updates. If yeah. you have been paying attention to that, you you know that we still have quote unquote in a number of sense have been in a seller's market. The buyer demand hasn't been there, so this doesn't surprise me too much that as soon as buyers come back to the table, there's still not enough inventory to keep everybody fed in yeah. a sense. So uh, so this is it's really interesting. Now the the idea is how much inventory is going to hit the market you know, how, how, you know, what's the portion of food to being fed kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but right now we're still in this position of like, there's not that much out there. Right. And buyers seem to be interested again. I think it's, this is the spring market that's slowly coming up. What we saw last year, there was that, there was uh, two or three rate pauses in the beginning of the year and the market really picked up. And I think people felt confident that these are the rates and this is what it is. Yeah. And as we've said a few times before, we'll repeat it again. When the Bank of Canada meets for these announcements, this is only impacting variable rate mortgages and lines of credit and things related to that. Yes. It has nothing to do with the fixed rate. Yes. If you want to see the trend or where the fixed rate amounts are going, you're going to follow the Canada bond yield, the bond rate. Yep. That's going to determine. And it goes in sync. So when the bonds go down, the rates go down for the uh, fixed rate mortgages. Exactly. Yeah. And they took a they took a leading uh, a leading dip, basically. Yeah. They, they dropped way faster than... Uh, because this is the prediction, right? The bond, the bond yields moves on prediction of the year and the predictions that this is the year of cuts. Yep. So that's where it kind of started. Yeah. And we've seen, as Chris said last week, there are some products you can get under 5%. Majority of the fixed rates are still in the five. Yeah. But I think people uh, are probably going to take up that those fixed rates instead of the variable. Um, and, and as they start to see that come down, I think more people are going to come out of the woodwork. And uh, yeah, we're, we're off to a strong start. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah. Um, so... I, Speaking of all this inflation talk and uh, rate talk, uh, our friends over in Turkey, the country, not yeah. the animal, not the majestic bird. <laughs> our friends in Turkey. Our the friends animal. in Turkey. Uh, they saw inflation at 65%. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, that's a huge number. Yeah. Oh my God. We're stressing at 8%. Our high was 8% when they started saying, okay, we need to you know, rail things back. And this is why. So it doesn't get to 65%. Oh my God. Now, if that hasn't gotten you, guess how much they hiked the rates by? How much? 250 points. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. They got a small problem with inflation over there in Turkey. Uh, So it's 45%. That's the rate. (laughs) 45%. To borrow? 25%. No, no. 45%. Sorry, 45%. Yeah. Oh my God. Not 5.25%, 45%. Oh, my heart. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I had to read this a few times to make sure I was reading it correctly. And yeah, Turkey, big oh. problem with inflation. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not there. Uh, this is us keeping our, keeping it. Well, that's, that's hyperinflation comes real quick when it comes. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, yeah. that's terrifying. And I think back, cause like there's always realtors. I don't know if you see this, like a lot of realtors, Toronto based realtors, they'll travel to another country. They'll spend, you know, a week there. And then all of a sudden they're an expert in that country's real estate market. <laughs> and I specifically remember this one realtor hawking Turkey properties as the next big place. I was like, wow, that's a little like, <laughs> it's a bit of a reach. Like really Turkey? <laughs> I don't really people hear people saying like, oh, the rental rates are incredible in Turkey. And like now, this is a couple of years back that this realtor was promoting it. Now I hear this and like, wow. Oh, that hurts. I wonder if anyone ever took them up on that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <sighs> that, that, I, I'm sure one or I'm, I'm sure one or two people got hooked into so that's so dangerous. Yeah, yeah. 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 Turkey. But back home, you've got a listing up to go, coming up this week. I do. Yeah. So we got one coming. Um, it's in uh, Maple actually. Ooh. So this is for, again, this is for two bed renters. Okay. Uh, this is a, actually a huge basement uh, unit that was newly renovated. Nice. Uh, it's uh, the address is 71 Finehorn. Finehorn. Or okay. Finhorn. Okay. 
Uh, but it is, uh, like I said, it's about, it's over a thousand square feet. It's two bedrooms. Nice. Um, it has a brand new kitchen, brand new flooring. Uh, it was just basically done recently. So, uh, it's, it's a gorgeous spot. And, uh, yeah, if you are looking for uh, a two bed rental space, it's mm. going to be up, uh, on Monday. So it should be up the day uh, before this comes out. While you're listening, we are live. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's near Wonderland. Yeah, it is near, uh, it's right near Wonderland. It's like five, it's a nine minute drive to Wonderland. Nice. So shops at Don Mills, not shops at Don Mills, Vaughn Mills. Von Mills. Yeah, you're, you're close to Von Mills. Everything, all your, your shopping is about a yeah. uh, like five to ten minute drive. There's a really good sushi spot up by Von Mills called Tora Sushi. Tora it's like sushi. a torch style. Yeah. Really oh, good. okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Good to know. There's a couple, there's a couple gems, gems in that yeah. in that little area. Yeah. There's a Marcello's up there too. You know the one we go there to? There is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first one I had, actually. Oh no, St. Clair's better. So I yeah, yeah. it is better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've had it from yeah. so when I had it with you, I was like, oh, this is a this is a little bit of a step up. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to step up and find a really good place. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be on a Monday. We're gonna be going up um, at. We're gonna be going up at two thousand fifty for this uh, cool. for this basement two bedroom. Actually, we're the uh, we're the best priced in the neighborhood. So good stuff. Keep uh, keep your eyes up. Fingers crossed that one goes quickly for you guys. Yeah, thanks. I also have a rental up. I would like to highlight one two three Portland Avenue. Yeah. Ah, sorry, one two three Portland Street. Portland Street. Yes, not to be mistaken with Portland Avenue. I don't think there is a Portland Avenue. I don't think there is either. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm still scarred by Buffalo, where there's 700 Main Streets, and yeah. <laughs> so I just want to be very specific. This is not on <laughs> Avenue. Uh, we got it up for 3,600 bucks a month. We're reducing the price, so when this is live, it'll be 3,600 bucks a month. Amazing. It is a brand new Minto, Minto built building, yep. right on the corner of uh, Portland and Adelaide. Uh, so it's a few steps away from uh, where we did the colder, the polar plunge. Uh, yep. Um, other ship. Other ship. Yep. Other ship. So it's it's sandwiched between other ship and you're right next to uh, Waterworks. They're opening up a massive food hall there. There's a really good dog park. Um, really love the area. The unit is fantastic. You did a walkthrough of there. Which... Yeah. No. No. The place is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, it's got like extra features to it too. You have the white yeah. plank flooring and like um, just done. Uh, the finishes are gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Place. He did a lot of upgrades. Crown molding. The backsplash. Crown in the molding kitchen. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done really well. Mille appliances. Um, but what he did, which is really smart, because it's a brand new building and there's a lot of um, a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. This is the only unit in the building, and this is only something that this landlord is doing. He's including all the utilities in that price. Which is amazing. Yeah, so yeah. if you want like complete worry-free or headache-free uh, living, this is the spot to be at. Yeah, that's it. And then this unit, correct me if I'm wrong, but utilities in general are not included. So water, uh, water, hydro, and heat are all not included on a regular basis. On, on, for all the other units, that's correct. They're yeah. not included, but um, our client is deciding to include it just to get it done, rent Love it quickly, it. and find a good person. So if you're looking to be either up in Maple or right in the core, we got you. Yeah, we got you covered. We got you. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get into it. Are we getting into it? We're getting into it. All right, it's time. It's time. Transition time. Saving you thousands. <sighs> Love it. I like it. Love that was it. good. That was good. All right, we're getting to the ultimate reminder today. Yes. This is vacant home tax reminder most certainly is 2.0 or 3.0 should 10. we get 0. into it yeah 10. Yeah, 0. yeah we've been every week kind of briefly talking about it on the podcast and we made the decision that like we needed to really dig deep into this one yeah and it makes sense because it's 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 new it's new it's brand new and uh we sent you know we sent out our blast emails to make sure everybody all our people were covered in that sense but there is a lot of people that still did not realize that it needed to continually happen correct so uh it's a learning curve that everyone's going through so we wanted to you know try to help enhance that learning yeah yeah <laughs> yeah basically really hammer home the point that uh, the the fees that if you don't do this are crazy high um, but let's get into the history of it. So this was started last year. Yes. This is a John Tory initiative. And the purpose of it? Purpose of it basically is uh, to to kind of incentivize people that own property in the city of Toronto to uh, not leave, not purchase a home and leave it empty. Right. Whether it be your primary residence or renting it out to a tenant um, so that there's less. Obviously, we've been dealing with a housing crisis for so long that this is an incentive and a way for Toronto to potentially make some money off of places that are left vacant. Correct. Um, they started this in 2022. So this, this started with the year of 2021 of what they assessed. Yeah. Uh, and the first round of taxes hit in 2022. Correct. The way that 2022 ran was they charged you, if you did hold a vacant home, they charged you 1% of the assessed value. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty hefty hit for people who did leave their homes vacant. And personally, I think this was a, I was on board with this. Movie. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, there's, 
I, I imagine the people that do own and are leaving things empty, there, there is, so there's, which we'll get into in a little bit, but there are exemptions that do come up. But sure. uh, I imagine that, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. If we're going to make more money, money for the uh, city, I'm game for this being one of the and, and trying to ensure that housing is used for housing and not purely as a investment asset. As a money tool. Yeah. It, you know, shelter first is kind of the mentality with this one. Yeah. Um, but last year, what was interesting was because it was the first time they introduced it, we all got these beautiful little letters in the mail, nice yellow paper that reminded us there was a, a media campaign. It was a very much talked about thing. Yeah. This year? Not quite. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Not many reminders went Not out. Not many at all. And I don't even know how I stumbled upon it. I think I put a reminder last year in my calendar. Like I'll, I'll schedule things out like two, three years in advance. So I yeah. don't forget it. <laughs> and it popped up like Jan 5th. And I'm like, is this the thing this year? Is this, is this still happening? And sure enough, it is. And it will forever be happening for as far as we can see that every year, if you own a property in Toronto, you will have to... Um, fill out this vacant home tax. You have to declare it. You yeah. have to declare it. Thank so you. here, this is the this is the twist on it. I guess the piece that you need to know is that, which I'm sure maybe a lot of you know at this point, but the piece that you need to know is you personally need to declare this. It's not assumed that you're living somewhere that even if you've been there for 15 years, correct? Uh, it's not assumed that you are the primary resident. Uh, you're you're not the the person living there, or you have a tenant in there, correct? Uh, you need to go on the city of Toronto web, Toronto's website and punch it in to say that I am living here or I have a tenant living here, correct? And so I've done it, did it with all my properties and it took all of two minutes and 30 seconds. Like it is such a painful, easy process. It is the simplest thing to do. It does not take long at all. All you need is your property tax bill. Yeah. And there's a number on top. There's two numbers you're going to take from your property tax bill. You plug it in, you state that it's not vacant and you go on with it. Yeah. It's, it takes, yeah, exactly. It's less than five minutes. It's super easy to do. It's just remembering to do it. Correct. And that's why we're around. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we're doing a podcast like this. So everyone listening remembers or, or at least triggers like, oh, does this apply to me? Uh, it's a very simple test. <laughs> if you own a house in Toronto, yes. <laughs> if you own a home, a condo, whatever you want to call it, yes, it applies to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's period, and and you're not gonna get you're not gonna get pinched if again if you're renting it out. It doesn't matter that you own in a second property. It yeah. just matters if it's vacant. Yeah, it's not a principal. For, for six months of the year. Correct. We'll get into the, the specifics of it, but it's not a principal residence tax. It's not a you can't own multiple properties tax. It's not that at all. It's purely a vacant home tax. Yes. So they just want to ensure that your home has not been vacant for more than six months. Yeah. So if you're a snowbird, you head down to Florida, you can do that. You're still considered a non-vacant tax, but you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to. <laughs> Fill this out. Clear it. Yep, 100%. <laughs> I was going to make a shirt. So I'm wearing my Madonna shirt today from the concert. <laughs> that would have been good. Yeah, yeah. F declare your... <laughs> yeah. Maybe for next week. We'll see if I could uh, scrounge some t-shirts together. Yeah. <laughs> so the deadline for this year, by the way, is February 29th. Yeah. So there's still some time on it. You got the month of February, but just do it ASAP. It takes such little, uh, such a little amount of time. Yep. Um, I want to talk about first the types of penalties. Mm. So I kind of just set it out. There's four types of penalties okay. that you can kind of, that can, you know, you can get hammered on. Which here. none of you are going to experience because you're all going to follow what we say and fill this out. Exactly. But if by chance you're either late, let's, let's start with this. Um, th it costs nothing to do as well. This yeah. is a free thing to, to fill out. So if you are late, the very first, so let's actually, let me start with this. If you forget completely mm -hmm. and you just don't claim it, mm -hmm. it is assumed that it's vacant. Hmm. This year, so from 2022, it was 1% of your assessed value. This year, they upped it to 3% That's wild. of this assessed value. That is so crazy. It's a huge number. Yeah. It's a huge, huge number. We were, so in, in simple terms, uh, you know, a million bucks, if your house is assessed at a million bucks, then you're $30,000. That's a, that's a tax you have to pay, $30,000. Even... And keep in mind, this is your assessed value. So this is not necessarily the money that you paid on it. It's not what your house is worth. It's the with the... Ontario government. Yeah. Yeah. Usually a lot lower. Yeah. Fair enough. But even if your house is assessed at $500,000, $15,000 comes out of your pocket. And so everyone's complaining about the potential three to 500 bucks, 600 bucks more we're going to be paying in property tax for the year. Yeah. Imagine then not declaring your home. You live in it, it's your home, and you get hit with another 15 to $30,000. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's insanity. That's insanity. And it's so simple to avoid. Yeah. Like there's really no reason not to do this out of just pure forgetting or not knowing about it. Yeah. But it's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, there's, yeah, there's no reason for it. Now, there, there's, 
There is also late penalties. Okay. So the, the due date is February 29th. So to declare, yeah. I'll go through the four the four types of penalties. So the very first one I'm going to talk about is just not declaring, which we talked about. And the second one I'm going to talk about if you don't submit on time. There's a weird charge that happens. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> but if you declare late, you get a whopping $21.24. $21.24 penalty penalty <laughs> if you sure. declare late. Okay. I, I do not understand why that number was chosen, but uh, just be aware if you are filing late, you can be charged with $21.24. Sure. <laughs> Tag it on. But there's another thing that I actually wanted to, to bring up, which is in the same paragraph, it mentions that failure to submit on time also may result in a $250 fine. Okay. So what I'm going to say is be aware that you can either be charged $21.24 for being late or as high as $250 for declaring late. The fines for uh, can go up to $10,000 when it comes to this stuff, but let's just start there. Sure. <laughs> uh, don't, just don't be late. Yeah. We're, we're reminding you and this far in advance for a reason. Yeah. Um, what else we got? We got, uh, so don't declare at all. You get hit with the actual uh, vacant home tax. You declare late, you get hit with $21.24 or $250. Next penalty is if you're one of the few people that actually do, or if you don't pay, sorry, if you're one of the, the people that actually do have a vacant home yep. and you're going to decide to pay this tax, be aware that if you don't pay it on time, you start getting hit with an interest rate of one. You get sorry. You get tacked on one point two five percent every month. So that's the interest on your late fees. Exactly. Got it. On that on that late fee, and that continues monthly until you pay it off. Mm. This, if it doesn't get paid, it gets rolled into mm. your uh, property tax mm. when that hits. So there's no avoiding it. Right. You will have to pay this tax somehow, some way. It's going to get tacked onto your property. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and lastly. But before you get into that, because yeah. I know what the type of penalty four is going to be about, um, last year, a lot of people forgot uh, for whatever reason, and the city was very, 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 very lenient. They've forgiven a lot of people. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just a reminder, you know, we'll give you this one free pass. But something tells me this year, there's going to be no mercy. Yeah. So you're going to be hit with not just the fines, not just the fees, but also the interest penalty. Yeah. Now, what happens if you lie? What's penalty four all about? So penalty four is if you lie about it, and that can be up to ten thousand dollars if you're caught. Yeah, that's a, another hefty on top of it. So you'll get hit with the with the vacant home tax plus an extra ten thousand dollars <laughs> plus one point four one point sorry two five percent interest Jesus. every month until you pay it. That's we're gonna have a zero percent vacancy rate in the city. It's pretty crazy. And uh, so when Olivia Chow put this all together. The original thought process was vacant home tax is going to estimate it to bring it within three years. Uh, I think it was three hundred and fifty million dollars. Wait, Olivia Chow didn't put this together. John Tory did. Or sorry, John Tory did. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, when, when the uh, when this we was had an, we, yeah we had an uh, uh, an episode when this got introduced. Okay. Uh, and it was how much uh, vacant home tax. So it might have been sorry, it might have been John Tory that put this into play. That's my bad. But. 350 million is what this was supposed to bring in in, the, in three years. Mm. Uh, the first year only got 54 million. Mm -hmm. So we're well under target of what we were supposed to get within the three years. Mm -hmm. I think this is why they're being so aggressive with it this year. We're going to we'll definitely smash 100 million this year. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> the, 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 no doubt in my mind, over 100 million will be at least charged in these type of fees and people who are just. Well, if it's 54 million, I mean, just times it by three, right? Yeah. There you go. You're already at 150. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good, good point. I even think of it that way. Um, so they're doing their job and collecting this. <laughs> right. And you know, it's, I think this is a good initiative. I don't really have a problem with it. If your home is vacant and you could afford to carry it and keep it vacant for X amount of times, I do think you should be okay paying $30,000. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 If you don't need that, that supplemental income. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm on board for it. We yeah. have very tight inventory and we need, uh, we need housing, especially with the rental market and the way that the rental market has been for the last while. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a little bit of relief that's been on site, but it's not, not too clear yet. Yeah. I think this will definitely help push more inventory out and people to really reconsider if it's worth holding a vacant property. Cause think about it, if you hold it for five years, 30 K what's that? 150,000. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of coin. It's a lot of money. <laughs> and nobody likes paying taxes. No. So I think it's a good initiative. Yeah. yeah no, I'm on board with it. Um, all right. Should we get into the next? Yeah. We're going to get into, um, kind of who's got to declare it when and why because i think the only reason someone would get caught in this of of <laughs> doing it incorrectly is just not knowing confusion confusion yeah um because I, I actually have a scenario that like i follow another one of the exemptions I'll, I'll get into that when we get into that section of it but mm. 
you know, there's my dad didn't realize or understand that there was exemptions for certain things because right. life happens. And this is not like, we'll get into it. I won't say much more. Than that. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's start trying to keep it as simple as possible. Sure. Um, if you're transacting. So the, the question is if you bought or if you're buying a home and it's kind of towards the end of the year, um, who declares what? Because you're trying to be talk, you're trying to talk about the year that just was. Correct. So in 2024, they only care what the status of your home was in 2023. Exactly. Not currently. Your home can be vacant right now. That's not the important point. It's the previous year. Yes. Okay. So the question is, who is supposed to declare, and how does this like how does the whole thing work? So you're talking like if you're selling your house. Yeah. Okay. If you're selling your house or you're purchasing. Makes sense. You know, if you're purchasing your house towards the end of the year and you're, tr are you declaring for uh, the past year or is it the seller's responsibility? Who gets taxed when all this happens? Like right. who's responsible for it? So to make things super easy, um, I've kind of realized that in two, it's, it's two scenarios. It's between January 1st and the, the end of, so it's the last weekday of February. So okay. this year is February 29th. Between, if, you're, if your house is closing between January 1st and February 29th, it is the seller's responsibility to declare. Now, it's not the seller's responsibility to pay the tax if he doesn't declare. Mm. It's actually the buyer's responsibility that remains. Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. It is, yeah. Okay. And uh, so it's important as a purchaser to make sure that the seller, if you are closing in that date, that you have some type of stipulation to uh, to um, provide proof right. that it has been declared, yeah. or um, you know, or you know, make sure you you structure it in a way where <laughs> if you do get hit with it, it's still the seller's responsibility. Yeah, and we have clauses for that. A lot of our offers already have those clauses written into written it to into ensure it. that the person who's responsible does in fact do it, and there's repercussions if they don't. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you closed December. Anytime before December 31st, pretty much, uh, then it is the buyer's responsibility to declare. Okay. So simple as that. Any other day of the year that's not January and February, it is the buyer's responsibility to declare. If you're if you're closing in between January and end of February, then it is the seller's responsibility. Mm, I like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you do buy, sorry, if you do buy, there is, is an exemption. So if you buy, if you're buying on December 31st. Mm -hmm or anytime like in December period or at towards the end of the year, you can, you're still going to declare it. And there's an exemption that allows you to avoid the vacant home tax. And it's the exemption is specifically transfer of legal ownership. Got it. So you don't have to worry about what the seller did prior, prior to you taking ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's talk about the exemptions. Cause that's what I was getting to a little bit earlier is that, um, this is purely targeting those who, and I think it's more common in the condo world because they're lower priced properties and easier to carry. Someone who's got that vacant condo and they're just using it purely as an asset and not as a rental or anything else. They're trying to get that inventory to come back to market. Right. Um, and so let's say, for example, this is a situation I have. My grandfather owns a home, um, but unfortunately he's can't live there anymore. So he's in an old um, senior's residence. Right. Right. For up to two years, that home is technically vacant right now, but because he's in the home, uh, we filed that there for an exemption given that he's not living there and he's in the home. And so for two years, we're allowed to have that exemption. So we did it last year and we're doing it this year. Yep. And this is the last year of the exemption. So for 2025, if this house remains vacant in 2024, we'll have to file, uh, we'll have to either put a tenant in there or figure out what we're going to do. But there's a two year grace period. Right. If you're, if you have a family member in a home and it's vacant for that reason. Yeah. And that's the thing is that there are legitimate reasons, right? right. And they kind of acknowledge that in, in some of their exemptions and, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just in our situation, um, we did fill out the exemption and then there was a subsection where we had to provide proof right. from the home and the home had a, it was called a, a proof of life. Mm -hmm. And the basically said, yeah, this person is alive and under our care and he's been here from this date and he's currently still alive to this date. Yeah. So you do have to have your documentation ready. Um, but something I think is most common where people might get stuck up in is if you have a rental. Right. So I have a rental property and my tenants are living in there. So therefore it's not vacant. Mm -hmm. So all I had to do was declare that and say, I have a renter in there. They didn't ask for a lease. They didn't ask for anything. Just make the declaration that someone is living there. Yeah. Now, if they are a suspect of that, they might come back to me and say, hey, can you provide proof of a lease? And no problem. I'll write one up. I'm not hiding anything. So that's fine. Yeah. But if you have a rental property, that doesn't mean it's vacant, right? It's not about principal residence at all. It's just, is someone living in there? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to get more yeses than no's. And if it's no, you're going to be paying big money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty, it, pretty straightforward in that sense. Yeah, pretty much. And like, again, this is, this is, and it would push somebody to, to potentially, like you said, you, you're, you're going to be vacant for, for two years yeah. um, with your, uh, 
you're going to have to make the decision of do we rent it? Yeah. Do we add more housing stock to the rental side or do we add more housing stock to the, you know, to the sales side? Yeah. Oh, you know, it, it just kind of forces you to, to make, make a decision, a, make a decision. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a few other ones. Um, the death of a registered owner. Yeah. Uh, that also. So if you, similar situation, um, if my grandfather was living in the home and he was the last one in there and he passed, we would get an exemption based on that. Um, if you're doing a major repair. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be out of your house for more than six, six months. Six months, yeah. Yeah, then that's fine. You do have to submit work permits and contractor receipts. So yes. they're, they're pretty strict on that. Yeah. Um, then you covered this already, but the transfer or legal ownership. Yeah. So if you're in that kind of uh, phase. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, same thing. If you're, if you're so uh, uh, occupancy for a full-time employment. Mm. So if somebody, if you do work for somebody and they do force you to move outside the GTA, uh, you could be exempt. Okay. You have to provide proof. You need a, a signed letter from the employer with a proper letterhead and things like that. But again, all these things, they ask you for proof. You can't just say. Yeah. Um, so the, the only thing I found was just with uh, the rental. If you have a rental, they didn't ask for any proof. You just had to say there was a rental. Is there not na a name? Or no. It wasn't a name? I didn't have to put the tenant's names or anything, just uh, that it's rented. Oh, okay. I had to just agree to that. And you, you do sign an affidavit that you are not lying. Not lying, yeah. Yeah. Because then you will get hit with a fraud yeah, charge. If you do get, uh, if you do get assessed, yeah. Be... And like sometimes this is the rental market right now. It's a little bit softer than it was in the heat of last year. Maybe you have your place vacant for two months. That's fine too. Right. You know, don't feel like you're you know breaking the law. It's just six months or more is all they care about. So it's not as intense as might sound from the outset. There are quite a few practical exemptions that you can. Yeah, Use. things that just make physical sense. And again, nobody should be getting hit with this because we should all be declaring by February 29th. <laughs> yeah, unless you got oodles of money and you don't mind paying an additional 30000 Yeah, Cool, we'll take it. <laughs> uh, last one I'll bring up is court order. So yeah. if you do have a court order that uh, doesn't that lets, prohibits you from living in the property, yeah, um, you can, you're exempt. You're exempt. Yeah, and those are all practical reasons. So like, I know when we hear taxes, our backs get kind of all up, like, oh gosh, another tax. But this is a practical one. It's not going to apply to very many people. Yeah. And if anything, it's going to bring more inventory and help with this housing crisis that we have. Um, so I'm surprisingly okay with it. Yeah, <laughs> Just, I'm more okay with this than the than the the property tax. Than the property tax, uh, it's it's yeah. a heftier hit, but uh, I think I think. The fact that it's hitting such select, yeah. a select group of people, and it's not necessarily just everybody. Correct. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, 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 it feels more okay. <laughs> yeah. This, this seems like a well thought out, logical tax to implement, and it's not penalizing you per se. It's, it's trying to better the city by ensuring we have proper housing stock. And I think the property tax is such a big ball of yarn. Like, there's so many strings that comes out of that one. This is very specific. Yeah. yeah <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> your house is vacant. You got to pay. Yeah. Yeah. And for six months or more. So you can still do your trips around the world. Just keep it under six months. Yeah. Pretty yeah, simple. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that pretty much sums the deep dive. Yeah. Maybe it was a shallow end dive. I don't think... Do you feel that was deep? It was... Uh, we went deep in a shallow topic. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a foot deep. There is... Uh, you know what? If you were, if there was any type of confusion, I think it would have... This clarifies Because there, there is not a ton uh, on it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's good to know what you can be penalized for. Yeah. And what you can get out of if you're worried about that. You know. And what the exemptions are and yeah. how, to, how to properly disclose or not disclose. Or, I don't know. You definitely need to disclose. <laughs> don't not disclose. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a word salad sandwich over there, which makes me hungry because I really want a sandwich now. Um, but, of course, if, if this still isn't resonating or there's still something you're not clear about, you could reach out to us. Yeah. Um, our beautiful website is now live and up. It is live. Yeah. Have we talked about it on air yet? Uh, probably not. Okay. Yeah, it's live. <laughs> we, should, we should be announcing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not one for big rollouts, but uh, I finally got the, the website back up. It's been down for a little bit while I was bringing in Joey to the team and getting everything laid out, but yep. we're back up. It's, uh, it's going to be a good resource. I'm kind of getting away from the um, like property search tools on it i think a lot of websites have that but you know your zucasa your condos.ca they do a far better job than than we could yeah uh, so this this website's more focused towards um the articles all of our podcasts are going to be up there you do some great videos explaining things in a little bit deeper uh depth than we get into on the podcast sometimes mm -hmm. yeah or more specific about certain ideas um so we're going to have all those up there uh, some really good resources we'll have some buyer guides some seller guides 
and a place to reach out to us if you have any questions. That's right. And if you just want to feel good, just type in torontolivings.com and just look at our beautiful faces. <laughs> that makes you feel good? <laughs> yeah. That stresses me out. Because <laughs> I, you're young. I got white in my beard. I'm like, oh, my youth is fading. <laughs> but yeah, we try to make the website as simple as possible. It's 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 just a good resource of everything we talk about and kind of a, a home base to, to put it all up on. Beautifully said. Thank you. Um, we've got an exciting month ahead of us. We might be doing a live to air. Well, not really live to air, but like on location. On location. House. Yeah, yeah. Recording in the next little bit. Uh, cool little spot that opened up uh, in the East End. And uh, we've kind of hinted before about this really big project that's uh, almost ready to come to market. We've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes on it. And uh, it's definitely going to be adding housing stock to the city yep. at a very affordable uh, cost. It's a, it's a pretty big special project. And uh, when we have more details, we'll definitely share it. But stay tuned for that because yeah. it's going to be a good one. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else you want to touch on? Uh, no, I think that's all right. Yeah. Go Bills. Go Bills. Well, they're actually eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> I, can still, I can still, you know, go Bills go next Bills. year. Go Bills. <laughs> Bills Mafia. Oh, their their theme song is, you know you make me want to shout. <laughs> oh, that's a straight wedding song. Yeah, I think that was, hey. No, yeah, that, yeah. I don't know if that was it. <laughs> you want to shout. I don't know. There was so much happening. It's hard to remember it all. And, but the best part of it was, so like these guys were wild, like crazy, 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 crazy fans. And then they played uh, the Killers. Uh, ah, Mr. Bright. Yeah, yeah. And the mood completely changed. They're like, I'm like, what the heck? The power of music. Bill's Mafia for life. That was an experience of a lifetime. Love that. We should do a road trip one day. Oh, I'm so game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so game to experience yeah, that. We'll do a Buffalo road trip when the weather's a little bit nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wife wants to go check out the downtown core. It's really good architecture. Is there? Oh, it's beautiful. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the Art Deco stuff reading the core was really beautiful. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We'll leave it there. Sounds good. All right. Happy. Uh, happy vacant home tax, yeah. day, everybody. <laughs> I'm so, so wondering where you're going to go with that. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm hungry, man. I got to go eat. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap it up. All right. Thanks for listening to the Toronto Living's Real Estate Podcast. You could find more information on how we work over at torontolivingswithans.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get price reports from over 150 different neighborhoods in the city each and every month. If you got any value, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you made it this far, thanks for listening.